So as a former FSA employee, uh, I was responsible for, for managing the county office. I was the county executive director. And um, we administered government programs, and those programs range from price support, conservation, disaster um, programs. And, and, and our goal was to, to reach the farmers who were in need of services uh, that we provided. And um, it, it was a great experience and a great uh, step in my career, um, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the hands-on and the one-on-one -on -one interaction with the farmers. Well, when I first walked into FSA office, I didn't quite understand. They told me I needed to have a farm number, and um, Jeannie Turnage, who is now retired, uh, was my FSA agent. And she sat down and you know talked to me. I didn't quite understand everything that she said. And so being a former federal employee, I looked up FSA and did my own research to get a better understanding of what the office was about and found out that they primarily did the insurance, they provided loans, and they were the originator of the FSA number that I needed to have in order to receive the rest of the benefits that USDA could provide. Um, I think you kind of have to get your foot in the door. FSA to me, when I first started working with them, I guess because I was so new, uh, they really didn't pay me a lot of attention, to be honest. Uh, when I produced that, that first hemp crop, it really put me in with the FSA office, like, okay, he's a real farmer. And I was able to get an equipment loan and um, just the doors just flew open after 2019 and um, just like I've, uh, they, I was able to get the uh, hoop house the next year and uh, it's just opened up so many doors. My advice um, to farmers who want to become involved with FSA is at any step in your operation, um, even when you just purchase a farm or lease a farm or rent a farm, um, I would encourage you to go ahead and get that farm number established or if you're leasing or renting a farm, go ahead and get added on that farm as a other tenant or operator. Um, you can do that initially at the very beginning of your farming process. And, and as you get that farm number, that's really the, the key stepping stone or the initial phase of getting you involved and in a system to be eligible for, for programs. And after you get acquainted with what programs are available, you can determine which programs would be a good fit for your operation. So basically just assess what's available um, and look at what applies to your farm and then go in and apply and put your application in so these resources can help you directly on the farm. NRCS has really been benefited me a lot, soil and water. Um, they helped me with the hoop house and they also helped me with the well, um, which are cost share things, but you just put up the money and once you're done, you get that money back. Uh, those would be the two main things and also um, Jason Silvers, with the farm, he's a farm loan officer that I have dealt with for the equipment loan. He really helped me a lot. Taking advantage of the free insurance that's available to socially disadvantaged farmers, um, and that's in place for the first 10 years as a new and beginning farmer that I would highly recommend um, farmers take advantage of. Since it's free, why not? And as you know, all the risk involved with farming and climate change, you don't know from you know, day to day what the weather's gonna bring. So you know, having that free insurance will help you. It's not going to pay for everything, but some reimbursement is better than none at all in the event of a severe drought, a snowstorm that, you know, destroys everything, um, please take advantage of the FSA insurance that's available. Sometimes when um, farmers and producers go online to the website with FSA or, or, or NRCS or any government uh, agency who may offer programs, it may become overwhelming because it's a wealth of information, which is a good thing. It's a lot to offer and it's a lot to read and it's a lot to learn. But my first piece of advice for farmers who want to get acquainted with these programs is go online and look up the fact sheets. The fact sheets are abbreviated versions of the program um, guidelines that's laid out in a format that's easy to understand and normally it's no more than one, two, or maybe three pages at the most. So I would encourage you to get acquainted with the fact sheets and that fact sheet is going to give you all of the information that you need to have a good background knowledge on the program so when you enter the office you kind of have a direction on which way you want to go and which programs that may benefit you on your farm. Well, 
I try to engage with them on a periodic basis, you know, at least two or three times a year. You know, I go in so they know my face. Uh, today, I'm going to stop by because it's time for the county elections. And I think um, as especially a minority farmer, we need to be represented on, represented on, have representation, excuse me, on the county committee. So I'm gonna put my name in the hat and I encourage other farmers to do the same because these are the people that make decisions on how USDA dollars are spent in your farming community. And um, most farmers that have been there understand that, you know, when they apply for that high tunnel, you know, if you've ever heard the word, no, you didn't receive it, if you're on that committee, you know why. And you have a say-so on who gets those resources. So I in encourage farmers to get involved and understand the inner working of how USDA dollars flow to their county by being on that county committee. And if you're not on the county committee, those meetings are open public meetings. Attend those meetings, you know, so that you can see and they know that, you know, you're looking so that, you know, there's equity in um, what's going on at the county level. To, you know, just start small. Don't think that you're going to have tomorrow today, you know, and that's what I've learned and is that, you know, just be slow and steady. Don't try to run too fast because it's going to cause hiccups and um, you want that paper trail. Get a good paper trail behind you and what you're saying you're doing and really do what you say you're doing, you know, and stick to the application of that and just stick with it, you know. And then eventually you'll be able to get some farm loans and different things, especially if you start just pulling in a little bit of revenue and you have some taxes to follow that, you know. Going into the FSA office to, to build a great relationship with that team is um, first, the first thing you can do is call ahead and schedule an appointment. Um, FSA and, and other government agencies are normally extremely busy, especially this time of the year with acreage report. And actually today is the acreage reporting deadline, July 15th. So they are extremely, extremely busy. And sometimes if you show up, you know, um, there may be a lot going on. Um, but take time to schedule an appointment and take time to look at those program fact sheets and have some knowledge of uh, the programs that you may be interested in. And also, I'll back up a little bit, if you're going in to establish that farm number, go ahead and already have a copy of your deed or your lease agreements. Have, have all the paperwork kind of in hand so when you go in, you will have everything you need to complete that first step or, or any step in the process of getting you enrolled in these programs.